Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Justin from Zon Commerce here to talk to you all today about uh, a tool that I've been using for quite some time. It's called AMZ Shark. Uh, I forget the gentleman's name, him and I. We've corresponded a few times via email, kind of talking about the software, exactly what it does for Amazon private label sellers or anybody out there that you know is looking to do some research on Amazon and wants to track different products. Um, you know, this particular tool has really evolved over the years or over the past few months. Uh, originally, it was meant primarily for tracking sales and also for do, sort of being more of a keyword explorer so you can find different keyword ideas. I think now they have some other things such as um, Niche Scout where you can find different opportunities and see, you know, is this a, a good niche that's worth going into? They also have review alerts and super URLs that you can use. So if you want to use a forwarding URL that you want to send out to people, it will then forward uh, uh, people that go to their URL to the super URL. Um, so that's good from a tracking standpoint. I don't use that as often, even though I do think that's a powerful tool because, you know, you don't want to send people these super, like, you know, like, like I said, super long URLs and they click on the wrong URL. And also it's just nice to track those different things. But in my judgment, I think the two areas that probably are most important that most people will typically use AMZ Shark for are the sales tracker and the keyword explorer. And I probably say the, the sales tracker more than anything else. But I figured I'd show you guys first the keyword explorer and kind of how that's used on a regular basis. You, you can see here that and you can pretty much put any keyword in here. You can put selfie stick. I mean, anything that, that you think you want to do some research on to see what kind of keywords you can pull from, that's what this tool essentially does for you. And so if you come down here, you'll see that we have different things that we've been looking at, considering like those big ones, for example, the big wine aerator, the ones that you pour the wine into and it kind of comes through. Uh, through the, the wine area and essentially aerates the wine, thus improving the flavor profile of the, um, of the wine. And this tells you exactly the total monthly searches. Now, this information is being pulled in from Google. But in my judgment, I do believe that that information is not only accurate, but it's also very applicable to what happens on, um, on, on Amazon.com or any of the other websites for that matter. Well, I'd say primarily Amazon.com because this is primarily for the U.S. But it's really just good information to take a look at. And you can see here that the wine aerator gets about 9,900 searches a month. Average cost per click is 74 cents, which is relatively low. But I still believe, you know, something is better than nothing. And they've come up with about 976 different keywords that you can sort of look at that might possibly have some uh, some comparison or some variation to the keyword wine aerator. So let's go and click on that and you can see all the different variations to choose from. You have everything from wine aerator pour, wine aerator pour decanter, red wine aerator. I mean, there's so many different variations in here you can see. And, you know, quite a number of these are probably not going to be applicable um, and, and sort of serve as both a money term and a term that you can leverage from the standpoint of doing research or proper research on. But, you know, this still kind of puts you in the pack to figure out exactly maybe there are some some nuggets that other people aren't advertising on. Maybe there are some long tail keywords that a lot of people, not a lot, but a good number, you know, are looking for. And you're probably the only one that could potentially show up for that keyword such as wine aerator, poor premium aerating. I, I would imagine that doesn't get a lot of searches, but maybe it does. Maybe you take some of the, the highest performing ones that only have the keywords wine aerator in it, and you focus on those and anything that doesn't make sense, like red wine aerator set may Shion, you know someone's looking for that specific brand. So you may not put that in there. But at the very least, this gives you a sense of all the different opportunities that are available um, uh, with this particular keyword explorer. It's very powerful. It's very useful. Um, I, I personally, I, when I do my keyword research, I use a couple things. I use merchant words, which is a really, really inexpensive tool. Um, but it's, it's still very effective. And I also use Google keyword planner which too is very, very powerful. Um, I mean, I, I come from a digital marketing background. We have a digital marketing agency. 
Um, we have a lot of clients in the SEO, search engine optimization, and paid search pay-per-click advertising space. So Google Keyword Planner is very useful for that. I think I, I have done another tutorial on how to use that particular um, tool. It's very effective. Um, but uh, for the sake and purposes of, of this, AMZ Shark, I think it really pulls a lot of that data from Google Keyword Planner, thus saving you some of that time, which is kind of cool. So that's how you use the Keyword Explorer. But here's the, the, the thing that I use more than anything else. I use Sales Tracker, and Sales Tracker essentially tracks the sales of any potential competitors or anybody that you may have an interest in selling their products on Amazon. So if you come down here, uh, you can see that. I mean, we have a lot of different guys that we've been tracking just because we want to and see what's what's possible, what's available. And you can see here, like, you know, let's just go kind of down the different uh, columns. You know, under product name, you have the product name. Uh, the best lemon squeezer will take them, for example. You have their ASIN number. Estimated sales. Now, I, I, I'm not quite certain how accurate this is. I've, I've done my own testing. I've sort of compared the BSR, the best selling rank of certain products and compared it to what I think would be a good rolling average for the month and compared it to these numbers. And I've typically seen these numbers to be lower than what the BSR suggests that product is selling on a monthly basis. Sometimes you do have to factor in that that product or that the owner of that product may have done some sort of a promotion during that time frame. It's a lot of other factors. But if I see that that BSR is pretty consistent over a full week and I come here and I say, oh, well, you know, this is clearly um, uh, underreported or not underreported, but I guess to a certain extent, um, not selling as much as uh, as uh, the BSR suggests, then I'll go ahead and say, all right, well, this actually could still be a good product because you know I'd rather you underestimate than overestimate the estimated total number of sales. So that's something else to consider. And then this also gives you a sense of the revenue. This essentially takes the estimated sales number times the 1995 and gives you the total monthly uh, revenue uh, numbers that comes in for that particular product. So that's very useful. But then, you know, for whatever reason, they're unable to show this, um, show the, the total number of um, sales that they're getting on a daily basis. And this is primarily because they have too much that's currently in stock, which tells me that this seller actually does really, really well. So don't be scared when you see a person has too much in stock. It means that they are doing really, really well from the sales standpoint. And so I kind of use that as, as a barometer. If they have a lot in stock, then you know you could tell that they're probably doing fairly well. Not always, but most of the time that's the case. And so you know, let's go down to someone else. Let's go down to this guy right here. You can see here for this wine aerator, these guys are doing about two, one, one, two, three. Yeah, they're not doing so well. But you can see here that it gives you a breakdown of how much they sell each day. And the way um, the way the guys over at AMZ Shark are figuring this out is they're essentially doing the 999 trick. Now, for those who don't know the 999 trick, essentially what you do and what these guys do is you go into Amazon, you search for a product that you have an interest in, and you add it to your cart. Instead of adding just one, you change that, that one to 999. And what will happen is if if Amazon has you know less than a thousand units in its inventory for that particular SKU or for that particular product, what it will tell you is, oh, sorry, you know we don't have 999, but we do have you know let's say 978. And that day, what you do is you write that number down, and then you come back the next day at that very same time and you do the same thing, that 999 trick. And then it may come back and say, oh, sorry, we don't have 999, but we do have, you know, let's say 958. So that tells you that from yesterday to today, that individual sold 20 items, more than likely sold 20 items. Sometimes you have to factor in whether they had some that may have been in reserves, blah, blah, blah. But in this instance, it tells you that they sold probably something close to 15 to 20 items. 
And that's essentially what this does, but this does it close to four or five times per day per SKU per item. So that's the reason why I love this tool is because it really shows you the power and you know really allows you to do more competitive research. And it's not, again, all these different tools that we use as, as Amazon private label sellers, they're not perfect, but you want to get as many data points into your arsenal so you can make better decisions on what products can really make a difference for you um, as you continue to build out your brands or pick individual products that you want to sell um, on a more consistent basis. And so, you know, as you kind of go down here, it also kind of gives you the dates. They just recently add this feature. So it tells you the actual dates and what they're doing. And um, also it gives you the sales rank um, for that particular product. So, you know, it's, this is this is really useful stuff. It gives you some really good inf insights and information on how this product is doing. Uh, you can kind of scroll further down, scroll further down. Ah, this is the one thing I did not talk to you guys about. So I'm also a global seller. I not only sell in the United States, um, you know, our company or companies, if you will, we sell uh, in Germany. We also sell in the UK. We sell in Spain, France, Italy, and we also sell in Japan. Japan has really been a, a pretty cool market, to be honest with you. But the th cool thing here is like, let's say if you want to add a product, right? You add a product, you come down here, let's say I'm, I'm just for, you know, just for the sake of it, I'm just going to add this in. You can pick, you, you can pick exactly what uh, market that ASIN is in. So you don't have to only focus on the United States. If you're a UK seller, you can focus on the United Kingdom and all the products in the United Kingdom market. Japan, Italy, Spain, France, and Canada as well. We also sell in Canada too. So that's why you see here we have so many different products. I mean, these aren't the ones that we're necessarily selling, but these are certainly some that, we're, that we've considered, that we've looked at and said, oh, this could be good, this couldn't be, and then just kind of, kind of go from there. So you know, this tool is not just for the, the seller that wants to do business here in the United States. This is for that seller that wants to do business all around the world. And it has that power, it has that flexibility to allow you to expand your business beyond the borders of the United States. So for all those global sellers out there or people that wanna sell um, internationally, or if you wanna just do some research because you're curious, you know, AMZ Shark, I mean, for the price point, I believe it's like 50, maybe 75 bucks uh, a month. It is it is, it is kind of one of those things. It's like a sunk cost in my judgment. You just add it in, you don't even think about it because it gives you um, it gives you the, the you know the, the the prowess to figure out exactly what tools or not what tools but you know what products have the potential uh, to sell and which ones don't so you don't make bad decisions on picking those particular products so this is how kind of how I use it um, I really don't use review alerts that often to be honest with you I mean there's so many other things that I do you know, from a, you know, from a competitive standpoint. Um, so I, I'm usually not looking at review alerts that often. I mean, you know, this could be useful if you wanted to, but you could probably, you know, click into some of these individual um, uh, profiles of individuals and maybe find their, um, find their, uh, their emails and reach out to some of these top reviewers if you want to do that, which is good. But I have other methods that I go about doing this, which is a lot faster than this one. So, but it's still useful information if you want to take a look at it. And you can also create little email um, preferences, email alerts, and also you can download a lot of this data as well, uh, which is pretty cool. And then finally, you have the uh, super URL. So if you want to create super URLs, you can do that, which is also very useful. Um, so all you really do is you put in your ASIN number, or your ASIN rather, you put in your keyword here or the keywords that you want to um, um, uh, leverage from a super URL standpoint. And for those who don't know what a super URL, sorry for those that do, but I feel like I do need to explain a little bit. A super URL is essentially when you go to Amazon and you do a search for a particular product um, via a keyword, that's essentially how you're able to build up your rankings for that particular keyword. So let's go back to our famous selfie stick. So we go down the selfie stick, and you come down here and you see that these guys at Impow, golly, 3,100 purchases. And I mean, 3,100 reviews, that's ridiculous. But anyway, you go down here and these guys are number one. And so when you click 
on the actual um, item, you see, and you look at this URL, you'll see here that you know you have Amazon, you have their URL. This right here is their ASIN number. That's their ASIN number. But if you go to the very end, this is the keyword that essentially would, would get credited once you add that, that product to your cart effectively. So that's essentially a super URL. It includes all this information, including those keywords at the very end. And what's cool is you can actually do change, change these yourself. If you wanted to do like something like best selfie stick, remember here, look here how it says selfie sticker and see how it changes when I just put the best in there. See how that changes the best selfie stick? And it still keeps the same ASIN because that ASIN is still in there. That's essentially what a super URL is. And whenever someone makes a purchase, whether it's a promotion or a general organic purchase or a purchase through your private your product listing ads, that gives you that sends a signal to, to Amazon telling them that hey, these guys are getting buys and purchases from this keyword. We should rank them a little bit higher for that potential keyword. That can be very, very powerful. And sometimes you want to track that information so you can put all the different keywords in here and then you can just hit save super URL and you can get your own, you can create your own unique slug or they can give one, give one to you. So I use this sparingly. I use this every once in a while. I use it all the time, um, but it can still be very, very useful. Very, very powerful. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, again, you know, Niche Scout, this, it's a new tool. I haven't used it yet, but I probably will in the near future. Uh, the Keyword Planner, Keyword Explorer rather, uh, is also very powerful if you want to just get some keyword ideas. Again, I typically go directly to the source, which is Google Keyword Planner itself. But the Keyword Explorer is still, still useful. And that data in Google can and does extrapolate over into amazon.com uh, as well as amazon.co uk and some of the other markets um, sales tracker is what i use more than anything else still probably you know from from a competitive research standpoint more powerful than anything else that i can imagine um, there's another tool out there it's free it's called camel camel camel.com again that's camel camel camel.com i never use just one tool by itself i always use multiple tools just to you know, have more points to really corroborate my suspicions um, or my excitement uh, for a particular product. Review alerts, again, you know, it's nice to get alerts on certain reviews. I don't use it that often personally. And then super URLs, we just talked about that. You can, do, again, you can do super URLs across the different markets too. It doesn't just have to be one particular market. And so, I mean, I'll just tell you, the guys, you know, if you're an AMZ, uh, uh, Amazon seller, um, AMZ Shark, it's a very good tool. It's very effective. I've had conversations with the seller. I mean, with the with the owner, um, they're constantly working to make improvements. They're in it for the long haul. This for them, this isn't just a tool that, you know, they're trying to make a quick buck on. They want to create a product that's going to be not just successful, but also very, very useful to the typical Amazon seller that's out there. So. You know, I would highly recommend this tool to all you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and also feel free to visit our website at www.zoncommerce.com where we have a lot of other tips and insights on how to be a successful Amazon seller, both at the local United States level as well as the global level. Thanks so much, guys. Greatly appreciate it. Talk to you soon.